Have you heard about Global Poker? Global Poker is the fastest growing card room in the US today, and it's available online at globalpoker.com. Global Poker is a social poker site that offers safe and secure cash out options by using their unique and patented sweepstakes model. Players can compete in big guaranteed tournaments, jackpot sit and goes, or cash games featuring Hold'em, Omaha, and even Crazy Pineapple. Don't wait. Check out Global Poker today. Poker Stories is an audio series that features casual interviews with some of the game's best players and personalities. Each episode highlights a well-known figure in the poker world and dives deep into their favorite tales both on and off the felt. Hello and welcome back to Poker Stories, a podcast brought to you by Card Player, the Poker Authority, and hosted by me, Julio Rodriguez. This is episode number 64, and it features Scott Clements. Uh, Scott is 37. He is originally from Washington, and uh, he's another one of those guys who found poker during the boom and managed to rise to the top. Uh, He has a very interesting poker origin story uh, that basically involved him overpaying to get into a tournament that was sold out. Long story short, he got into the event, it went well, and it led to the next thing. Uh, which led to the next thing, and so on and so on. Depending on who you ask, Scott has two World Poker Tour titles, the biggest of which was the 2007 North American Poker Championship, which he won for $1.45 million. He also has two World Series of Poker bracelets, the first coming in a $3,000 Omaha 8 or Better tournament, and the second coming in a $1,500 Pot Limit Omaha event. Although Scott has been one of the most consistent performers during the annual Summer Series, he has been going through a bit of a bracelet drought in recent years, with six runner-up finishes since his last win, which is a topic that definitely came up. Uh, Scott has $7.8 million in lifetime live tournament earnings, along with another $4 million or so won online. Anyway, that's enough intro. Here's my conversation with Scott Clements. I am here All right. with Scott Clements. Scott, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. It is uh, late April, so we are looking down the barrel of another summer. Mm-hmm. What will this be? 13, 14, 15 summers for you at this um, I, I guess it's, I think the first one I, I played, I think, was in 2015. Or, I mean, no, 2005, excuse me, 2005, I think, was my yeah. first one. I only played like two events that year, but... I think 2006 was kind of like my first full summer. And it still wasn't even that full. I probably only played like 10 or 12 events that year. That's right. What constitutes a full summer nowadays? You know what I mean? Like when you – I mean that's kind of your time of the year, right? Because you get to get all the Omaha events in there, the mixed game events. Yeah, I I love it because – I mean, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Nolan Holden, but it's it's quite boring compared to the other <laughs> games. So I love during the summer, it's just like, oh yeah, 08, PLO, and then a bunch of mixed games that I never get to play. I get to play some PLO and mm-hmm. stuff like throughout the year, but yeah, I just love to play all the... Yeah, when do you seven. get to play like a PLO 8 tournament, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like outside of a couple of small mm-hmm. stakes online stuff? Mm-hmm. So have you looked at the schedule? Have you put together... I think, do you know how many events you're going to play? Is that something you look at this early? I, you know, I don't really need to look at the schedule. It's just like, it's always going to be about the same. I actually looked at it the other day because everyone always asks me about the draft and everything. And I'm always like, I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to play, but it always just kind of depends on how I'm doing. Yeah, so yeah. like, I mean, yeah, I'm going to play a lot of events. And I did look at the schedule last week when I was in Florida because uh, Jake Schwartz, uh, he was asking me about, and he said, maybe draft me for the, oh, for the, the, for uh, the yeah, Daniel Negreanu's, Negreanu's fantasy, fantasy draft. draft yeah. yeah. So. I looked That's at a big deal. I mean, they put up twenty five thousand dollars. They want to know for sure if you're going to mm-hmm. play. I mean, I know a bunch of people I think asked a few me last years year back. Somebody spent a ton of money on Ivy, and he didn't even play an event. And oh I yeah, think, that's so brutal. So that's the danger, right? You mm-hmm. got to find out where Scott's mm-hmm. at in his life. You know, is he going to play a bunch of events or not? So yeah, and I, I think the ones that I'm going to, I mean, there's a lot of ten Ks that I would skip. I don't. I've never played short deck and everything else. And the fifty mm-hmm. K, like I'm, you know, it's just going to be. Like, if I'm having a great summer, I'm going to be like, yep, let's fire it up. But if not, then it's just going to be like. 
50k is a lot of money. And yeah, yeah, exactly. There was a few years where like I had like some neighbors and some friends from back home, and they just really wanted me to play. So they they put in a large portion of it for a few mm-hmm. years, but without any caches, they didn't. They were kind of done with that. Yeah, you can always tell how someone's summer is going if 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 they play the 50k or not, because mm-hmm. it's that's the time of the year. Well, it actually, it depends. Some years they put it early, and that was a disaster. Yeah, for a lot of players. Yeah. Um, Probably better for the prize pool overall in that specific event. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not for the 10Ks that follow. Anyway, let's go back to the beginning, uh, July 19th, 1981. Uh, Mount Vernon, Washington. Were mm-hmm. you born and raised in Washington? Yes. Never left? Nope. Um, not until I went to college. Mm-hmm. So uh, I went to college at one place in Washington, in eastern Washington first. And then I, I went down to California and went to a couple of different schools down there. You needed the beach? <laughs> I needed the sun. I, Eastern, Western Washington is not that cold, but Eastern Washington was so cold, and mm-hmm. I hate the cold, so I was like, I'm out of here. We'll so. talk a little bit about Mount Vernon. What were you getting into? I know you had one, at least one brother, right? Mm-hmm. I have three brothers. So, okay. Um, two of them now live in Eastern Washington, and the other ones, he still lives in like, Mount Vernon. So, but, yeah, grew up, played sports, and I liked it there. But Four boys all into sports, huh? Yeah, all in sports. But two of my brothers, are uh, they're 10 and 12 years older. So oh, okay. they, uh, they the big gap. Yeah, yeah, quite a big big gap, but yeah, we all played a lot, of, especially my older two older like especially my oldest brother, he played like all the sports and mm-hmm. then so yeah, I was uh, you know, doing some cyber stalking on you for this uh, interview and caught a photo of you shirtless in a tough mutter event on your on your Twitter. Oh yeah. And I was like, "Oh man, that guy's like, you know, he's keeping in good shape." Yeah. Were you always in good shape or were you one of those like fat kids that kind of like decided to go uh, hard was, the other I way? I could have been like maybe a little bit chubby like in 5th grade. Mm-hmm. Like I really but I'm like almost the same like size as I was. In, I'm pretty much the same as I was in high school. You've just always been. Yeah, I've been into the gym yeah. like for, you know, I guess it's been twenty plus years, and like, and you know, I mean, I, I, sp- I sprouted kind of young, but then like I, I didn't really keep on growing like height wise. Yeah, height wise. I mean, you know, you're not short. I'm not short, but like you know, my I mean, my brothers <laughs> like my one of my brothers is like six two, six three. So mm-hmm. I'm not that. So five nine. Well, you just came <laughs> from the gym today. I mean, mm-hmm. like, what's your this is your off season. I mean, what's your what's your uh, regimen look like? Are you really strict or? I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I go to the gym like it's always like five to seven days a week, like for yeah. sure. Like it's you're not like, doing two a days or anything. no, I'm not doing two a days or anything else like that. And like when I have my kids here, because I have them on my own, like mm-hmm. I will. I mean, you can see some of the stuff in the corner. Like I just I have a little workout routine, you know, like I do some jump rope and some weights and stuff, whatever I can do here mm-hmm. while the kids are young. I can't really get to the gym, so. Well, it's funny, uh, I, I was mentioning earlier, I've been in this, I don't want to give away where you're living, but <laughs> I've been in this building before with another poker player. It was actually the second episode I ever did was Jason Kuhn, mm-hmm. and he was living with Ben Tollery. I don't know if they still live here or not, but they didn't even have a table. Like, <laughs> all they had was workout equipment in their, in their apartment. I mm-hmm. went in and... I was like, where are we going to do this podcast? And they had a standing desk. They wouldn't even sit down to play <laughs> poker online. Their entire place was, you mm-hmm. know, turned into a gymnasium. Uh, I was the one who got Jason in here because I've been, in, I've been, I've had this place for like 12 years, 10 or 12 years. Or oh, wow. Like yeah. So like Jason, you know, we've been really good friends for years. So like he had me look to see if there was anyone, <laughs> any of them available. And like, yeah, so I know, I know where he's at. Uh, okay. So, you know, always been athletic. What was your sport back then? Um, I played baseball and football, mm-hmm. baseball, especially like all through the years. I just played football like in high school. Um, so, I mean, I loved it. I wish my parents would have got me in when I was younger because I mean, I love the sport. I love yeah. hitting people and everything else. But baseball was like my main sport. That's the one that. What position did you play? I was a pitcher and a third baseman. So. Okay. So you don't want to get too bulky as a picture, right? No, no, no. I tried to get – I tried that. Actually, my senior year, I think I tried to put on weight. I was just like – I tried to eat everything to try to, like, gain mm-hmm. more power and everything else. I and mean, this was, like, during, like, fall baseball um, my senior year. I just yeah, Michael Phelps diet. Yeah, yeah, basically. I was just, like, eating. I was trying to get some more power for baseball. So, like, I put on, like – I mean, 10 or 15 pounds and it wasn't like it was muscle or anything else it was just like I was just eating and I was just all I was was slower and I was just like before the baseball season started I just was like nope I'm gonna get I'm gonna go to the gym and run every morning and get like back to like where I was and so, so was sports the plan or did you have more realistic you know I was pretty realistic because yeah. like I mean I was a pitcher and I was a I mean I was a really good high school pitcher but you weren't lefty there was I wasn't a lefty I didn't yeah. throw hard I just could hit my spots and I, I mean I threw like I threw from I just threw like a I threw a ton of different pitches like I could throw <laughs> overhand like three quarters and like sidearm and then like but I would you know curve slider like I, I just 
mix it up everything. So, but like it. I didn't throw hard. You were, al- you were already <laughs> pitching like a like a veteran who didn't have his stuff anymore mm-hmm. in, the, in the ninth inning. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I couldn't blow it past anybody. <laughs> but they would be mixed up with all the different angles. So high school, very good. But and then I only got to pitch a little bit in college. So and in college, what was the plan? What were, what were you studying? Uh, business. Yeah. Yeah. So I just was just basically went to school. Just took every business class that I that could. With a goal to do. I would get, uh, probably own my own business or work like I, I always loved real estate so I thought about like doing that stuff I really wanted to work with foreclosures mm-hmm. and I've, I've been saying it for like how many years like I mean I bought a house like when I was in college yeah. so like that was the whole the whole plan was just to get ahead in life like when I was in college like I was, I was still working a, 40 hours a, a week mortgage yeah. Guy, right? yeah I went ended up going into mortgage instead of um, instead of real estate because I knew someone and it kind of in like through the business. I thought you took that job after college, like finished school. Oh, or... I did take that job after yeah, college. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I dropped out of college. Okay. I mean, I really, I'm not that far from a degree, but I always said, like, mm-hmm. I would never work for anybody, so why would I, who cares if I have a piece of paper? I'd already taken exactly. almost every business class. Like, I'm, all I'm doing is, eh, here's $5,000 so <laughs> <laughs> for these random classes that probably aren't even that important, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so uh, you, you you leave school had you had you even seen poker at this point or was that I mean still I had too played poker growing up but not like no limit hold'em like I mean I played Chicago and everything else it was and, like a family game or grandparents or um, I you know we play always play cards and family get togethers and everything else but that wasn't as much poker we played like spades or hearts and like uh, uh, yeah, all these yeah. uh, cribbage and everything else so like but I did play sometimes I would play with friends and stuff like mm-hmm. I remember it's kind of funny like I won't mm-hmm. say what his name is but. Growing up, there were, we played three-handed poker a lot, and it was me and a guy who he played poker professionally a little bit, but then he also, but now he's a like a, a sharp sports bet. Okay. <laughs> and then the, the other random guy, I'm just like, how does this guy like he gets into a three-handed game who two <laughs> got <guy>, two <laughs> guys who play poker professionally yeah. for at least a period of time? Like it's like he probably just lost the money. And this other friend of mine, like <laughs> it's so funny because when we were in like when we were in like middle school, we used to like run four, five, six. Okay, and we'd yeah, just yeah. always be the house. So like the house, <laughs> like I was always gonna win. But like we were always. He was the one who got me definitely into like gambling because he like knew everything about it. Like he's taught me all this different stuff. But. I I was introduced to four five six in my twenties and it was very expensive. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, get, it gets and I, I I can't even remember the rules now, but I remember like you it could it could definitely get up there in the mm-hmm. money. Like if we'd play a poker game for like twenty dollars and then like someone would come and, and lose two hundred and four five six. It was just like So you get three dice, right? Yeah. And the nuts to roll is four five six. Yeah, four five then six and then trips trip wins. sixes is the next highest or something and then a pair of whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway Look it up, kids. Look it up and, look, and lose <laughs> your lunch money. So were you drawn to games of chance, gambling? Like, do you think that you had a was, – was that what drew you to poker or was it the competition winning kind of thing? Well, was I it definitely, money? definitely the competition. So it probably – like I was always into gambling and everything mm-hmm. else like that. It's just fun. makes yeah. everything better. Like it's just – so. Yeah. And Football game is more fun if you have something on the game. So to get – when I got into poker, all it was is like I had a house – and my, my brother and his friends, I mean, they're all my friends too, but like they're much closer friends now. Like mm-hmm. they needed a place to play their poker game for some reason. Like maybe they couldn't play at whatever house they were going to. Well, let's back up one second. How do you acquire a house at that age? I worked, I worked all the way. Like I, I was a server. Like I worked like 40 hours a week when I was in college. Mm-hmm. So I pay, I, whenever I, and I'd work all summer. I remember one summer, like it was a, like a private school. Like, so like I worked all summer at a refinery. And in a I'm, refinery. At a refinery, yeah. <laughs> and the next summer, I was going to a school in California. And this was like, I was going to go into sports management. Mm-hmm. Is what I was looking for. So it was a school, Concordia University, okay. um, that had that sports management program. So I basically, I had a half ride. So I think, I think it was something like, I worked all summer and I made like $8,000 or $9,000. And then I remember going down to school and like tuition that I had to pay was like eight thousand yeah, dollars like i basically like, paid oh. like every penny that i had like just to go to school and then like i was work i mean i was working i worked at red robin while i was in which I mean, we'll get to your past jobs in another yeah, question. yeah for sure okay <laughs> but yeah so <clears throat> so yeah so your brother says hey i have this home game uh and we need a place to host it and you're like hey 
Come lose my place. Yeah. I said, yeah, for sure. Let's play. And I can't remember. We were probably playing $5 or $10 buy-in, but it was a tournament. And I'm sure I was terrible. Like, somebody just told me, like, the rules. And I was like, I know the rules of poker, but, like, yeah. I'd never played Hammering Hold'em before. Yeah. yeah. But, um, and I remember I, we played, and, like, I got first or second the first time. And I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And it was a, you know, cool group of guys, and they'd all, it'd always I be always fun. I always asked, did you win your first session? Cause yeah. I've, most yeah, of us it was in a poker tournament. Yeah, usually do. Yeah, yeah, so it was a tournament, so, like... I, I, I got first or second the first time, and then like first or second the second time. And it was for no money, but I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And but I'm like, <laughs> then I'm like, I'm like, but it is the competitive part of it. So I'm just like, all right, I'm going to go buy some books. And I would just, I would go to the gym and I would just be like reading books. And, and what year is this? Was, had the poker boom even happened yet, or was your brother ahead of the curve? This was probably, I'm going to guess, 2003. Okay, so Moneymaker is about to win, just had one, something like that. Yeah, something along those lines. But yeah. maybe not even televised yet, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, two, I mean, it could have even been 2000, it was 2002 or 2003, I'm pretty sure 2003. Yeah, maybe WPT had been on the mm-hmm. air, that kind of thing. Yeah, they would, I mean, that would always be on in the background, that would mm-hmm. be, so it was a whole, like, thing, so. All right, so what got you more seriously into it? I'm assuming you, at that point, said, hey, the home game isn't enough, let's go online? That did happen. So at this, so we first, I, I ended up just taking over the game and running it every week. Oh yeah, and at this a little TD. <laughs> yes, and then at this point, I ended up buying a second house, which was it was actually a foreclosure that I bought pre foreclosure. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty funny story if we get into it. If you want, yeah, to. I'll I'll hear all your your uh, <laughs> real estate tricks. <laughs> so. I, this new house had a huge barn on it, mm-hmm. like heated and everything. So now yeah. we could expand for poker <laughs> every week. So we started. To get, so my and my guy, my friends were so into it. One of them's carpenter. He made his own tables and everything. Oh, really? So he built tables for the house. Like they were so into it. And then so the new house we had like I think probably I think we had like five or six tables because mm-hmm. we would get like every week we would get for like forty a, a people. little tournament. Yeah. So we started to get like forty people a week. Oh man, you're putting up flyers all over town. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the word the word kind of spread and like people would just kind of come and 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 then we'd run like you know we'd run special events that were bigger buy-ins every once in a while like mm-hmm. say like hey this is gonna happen I can't remember if we did flyers or anything else we didn't really put flyers around town but we might have like said like hey like you You're know this is this day to invite random yeah. strangers to your house where you know there's gonna be money oh there was definitely strangers that, that came <laughs> but I mean it was such small it was small still exactly. small buy-ins so at, at that point like and then we would go play at the local casino mm-hmm. and they would have some other games and. It's still 2003. Washington is full of like a lot of little card rooms, like yeah. a lot of two and three and they, table rooms. They've gotten rid of a lot of them too, but mm-hmm. they used to have one. It was called the Swinomish, and they would run a daily twenty dollar buy in. And I went and I was winning money there, and I would always keep all my poker money separate. So I would have like two wallets, and one would just be like my poker money, which That's business background. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm like, I want to see if I'm winning. Mm-hmm. And then in 2004, in January 2004, my buddy had, had told me you've got to get money online. So I said, like, I'm like, I don't trust online. Yeah. Not for sure. Like, I said, all right, I'll put $100 on, and if I lose it, I lose it. Mm-hmm. And I I remember, I would think I was playing, I t- played $10 sit and goes and $30 sit and goes. And then I played, like, I think it was 2 4 limit, which obviously, bankroll management, not too great. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was, I can't remember how, I think I was down to like $19, like, in that first, like, and I ran it up into. That just that night, like two hundred eighty-five dollars, hooked and, again. And ho- yeah, I mean, I was already. I was like, okay, but but that was the only deposit I was gonna make. I said, if I lose this, mm-hmm. but I just I kept on winning and winning, and I, I didn't take any money off of there until I had six figures. Yeah. So I ran that hundred dollars, and like I really like besides like transferring money, like that was my only deposit ever online. Besides like you know transferring money back and forth, or like I mean, I guess I don't really consider it deposits now, like when it's a different site or whatever. No. So like if you're just using your mm-hmm. winnings from the other side. Yeah. It's like the Annette story. She won a free roll and hasn't looked yeah, back. Yeah, that's that's. that's. Uh, okay, so you're you're building your roll up to that six figure mark. How are you doing it? Sit and goes, cash tournaments. I would I would do I would be almost all like tournaments. Mm-hmm. So they would they would do the sit and goes, but they'd have multi table sit and goes. This is party poker is where I put the money on. Yeah, and I had my first big cash was. This is kind of crazy because I drove from Washington with a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. All the way down to California to play some live events. And what's funny is, like, what the first event I played, I played with Maria Ho. She knocked me out. Oh, really? Bad beat, but <laughs> I still remember. But we've been, you know, friends ever since. But this yeah, is yeah, like, yeah. 
obviously this is like two. Yeah, you're gonna remember that mm-hmm. your first event, Maria Ho Knoxio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I drove all the way down to California to play in an event that was like three hundred dollars. That's crazy. just insane. Like, and I, I, I can't. I probably played a few events and everything mm-hmm. else. Sorry. No, it's all good. Take care of what you gotta take care of. Well, I'm just trying to mute this. Uh, okay, so, so but there's more to that story. So mm-hmm. I drove all the way down to California. Yeah. Um, don't cash in anything there, but whatever. And then I'm driving back, and my friend, he lives in, I think it was Santa Monica. This is the same friend that I grew up with, and he was one of the three guys. Now the sport's Hope. better. Yes. And You're he lets me stay You're talking, of course, about place. Jeopardy champion James Holzhauser. <laughs> Not him. <laughs> no. No, but that is impressive. I just saw that he passed a million. I don't, yeah. That's insane what he does. <laughs> On the drive back, mm-hmm. my buddy lets me stay at his place. He's working or playing poker or whatever. Yeah. And I hop into like, uh, I can't remember, it was like the Super Tuesday or whatever the party poker had. Mm-hmm. And I played it and I th- I'm trying to remember what I cashed for. Maybe it was my first, I think I cashed for like $10,000 or something. More than that, 300. That, but yeah, that was, I think it was my first big cash and it was like 10,000. Yeah. And like, so it's like, I built up my role. That was one, that was my first like kind of big score. Yeah. At that point, I'm assuming $10,000 doesn't really change your life much other than the idea of, Hey, this could be a nice secondary income. Or were you yes. all about? I want to get out of mortgages. I never, yeah, I never wanted to get out of mortgages. Okay, I, I, I will. I, so I just was playing. But that was like, and I kept on winning. And they had this, they had this local tournament that, um, in Seattle, mm-hmm. and this was probably one of my these were, and I can't remember if the first one. So I can't remember how many players they got, but it was so top heavy. The one of the, the I think the first one was twenty thousand at first, and then like second was like eight thousand. Oof, and so. I went there and I won it. And then they ran another one. Yeah. And I think one of them was 20 and one of them was 10. And then like the second one was like 10,000, I think. And I won it again. Like just outright one, no chop or anything else like that. Yeah. And that was kind of like, okay, building it up. And then they stopped running it. They made it <laughs> they were like, hey, we don't, we're not just trying to give this guy money. You yeah, exactly. Come in and, and Maybe uh, let's flatten these out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Just in case Scott wins again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, so how long were you playing online, you know, building it up before you decided I'm going to turn pro or did you, did you not turn pro until the Canada happened? I mean, I think that what kind of made me, when you say turn pro, it's like, I was kind of, I just mean, say your job, no more the job. And now I'm going to rely on poker. Well, I think it was 2006 and I, as a mortgage, I was a mortgage broker. And then me and the one of the, one of the owners was kind of a little bit, greasy fingers with money and mm-hmm. had had some issues so yeah. me and her, she was partners with another guy but the other guy said hey let's go start another company and i used some of my poker money to open up a new mortgage company with him got it got it and got so it. we were were off and running and then you know the we had a parent company flag flagstar flagstaff whatever it was and uh and uh you know they they gave us like one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. uh to start up in the building and we had all these employees. Everybody came like over to work for us. And so you were doing that while you're also by night trying to play. Yeah. Online. I would just be playing online probably at night and every mm-hmm. once I know I'd go play the daily, you know, tournaments and stuff like that. And so that was going well. And like, but we had to pay back before me and the other owner would get any money on the back end. At this point, like I was not really, I would do a few loans here and there, but not as many, like, cause I was more mm-hmm. doing poker and I was kind of like, Oh, I got this business where it's like, this, I mean, I'm just going to get money on the back end. This is going to be great. Mm-hmm. And so the week that we paid off that 125000 in debt yeah. that we had to pay off before we got any money, they shut us down along with like 40 others because the market was just crashing. Yeah. And so like, so at this point, the guy knows like I'm not even really in the office that much. You know, I just put up some startup money. Mm-hmm. And so he ended up going and starting it, just a new company like somewhere else. And obviously like didn't need me. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't blame him. He's still a friend of mine and everything else. There's no yeah, really he, point. Your heart like, wasn't in it. Yeah. Well, and like my whole point of when we started, it was like, well, I put in like, you know, a bunch of money. So like, that's what helped get us started. Exactly. And like, he doesn't need me to, for doing that. And he knows that I'm not really in the office. He's doing all the day to day stuff. So when that shut down, it was just like, okay, I guess it's just poker. Yeah. So, and I, and poker was going well enough anyway. Like I was doing well enough at that time where it was that like, that happened before or after Canada. Oh, way before this was 2006. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I, I guess I won my first Canadian tournament. Um, that's what I'm saying. Canada yeah. happened in 2006. Yes. The okay. Well, there's two, the yeah, first one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The, the disputed WPT yes. championship. <laughs> So I think they shut us down early in 2006. I think it was even before the World Series. And mm-hmm. that's like, because I want to, that's 
my first bracelet was 2006 as well. So, yeah, 2006 was a, a great year because I think I, I think I only had like 60,000 in buy-ins total. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, because Na- Canadian Poker Open, the so-called not really a WPT WPT, mm-hmm. uh, at least they're trying to change history, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I know that I, happened I, in I, October. Everything, yeah. every everything that I have says WPT champ, and I still say it's two WPTs. It's kind of unfair. Right. They they took it off, and I'm like, why are you saying that? It was like yeah. <laughs> they talked about televised. They televised it. Mike and Vince were doing it. They were going to do it in the states, but it's like obviously, like if Negroni made the final table, it would for sure been a WPT, and they would have mm-hmm. played it in the states. <laughs> Gavin Smith or whoever. Well, I want to talk about that tournament because I read a cool story about how you yeah. even got into that tournament so this is the uh let's go let's try to find the exact date this is october 24 2006 the canadian poker open 22 25 buy-in uh wpt nolan holden championship and they were sold out they were sold out so yeah and i'd already booked my flight and everything mm-hmm. so they say we're sold out but they're still running sick and goes to it Mm-hmm. I'm calling up the casino. I'm like, how do I get it? Like, uh, like I said, like I, I can't get there to play the sit and goes, but I will buy all ten seats of the sit and go and just win it. So that's it was three hundred thirty dollars. Okay, buying. so they had they were sold out, but they had a few seats left over for satellite winners. Yes, and you were saying I will buy every seat in the satellite. Yes, so it would cost pay me. the extra juice. Yes, just give me the seat into the yes. main. That seems like a good deal for the casino. Yeah, and they wouldn't do it. Like I kept, I was like, "How do I get in?" And they said, "Well, the people can sell their seats." So like, I tried to find ways to buy them from people. Like, mm-hmm. couldn't find it. You know, through all the, uh, you know, I don't know what was the, you know, it was probably pocket fives and stuff like so that. You just show up at the registration. I showed up. Desk I took a red. Eye. I took a red eye, mm-hmm. and I got there the morning of. Get through, uh, cross the border, and everything. I get there, and I said, I walk in the room. Does anyone want to make some money? <laughs> and like, I mean, guy says. And I'm not even thinking. I got American money, mm-hmm. and at this point, like it's worth about ten percent more. Oh, I was there this tournament. I remember the, the exchange rate was very friendly for us Americans at the time. Yeah. So he said, "Well, like, I, I kind of want four thousand, <laughs> and I don't even think I give him four thousand American. He's probably like, sweet. <laughs> this is for a twenty five hundred, twenty seven hundred, twenty seven hundred dollar buy in yeah. Canadian. Yes. So, event. So you give him four K American, which was about forty four hundred Canadian." And I, so I get, but I get into the event yeah. and I just go wire to wire. I'm never all in, in the entire tournament and <laughs> win it, which gives me a seat into the 10 K. And then yeah, I won so you that. Win that for $222,000. Obviously it comes with a 10 K seat for the next year. Um, at the North American poker championship, the same venue, also a WPT. Uh, you win that one for $1.45 million. That was a fun final table. I remember that one. It was uh, you, Jay Little, um, Greenstein. What was that like? Because obviously, that's I mean, big. That's big life changing money. One point five. I mean, it million. was great. I mean, you know, I didn't really think about the money at all. I thought about it like before, like you know, the night before. Like I'm like, oh, if I get heads up with Jonathan or something, like I'll probably try to chop it because there was no reason to play for seven hundred thousand heads up. <laughs> yeah, there was a big jump because I think he only made seven seventy or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But when we got into it, like I just I didn't even think about asking, and I I mean that's just usually the case. Like I've been heads up with people before, and just like I don't even think about like saying like, and maybe they just don't want to say anything to me either. Yeah. Maybe they think they're better. Who knows? But like, it was funny because I said before I was like Jonathan would probably chop with me, and yeah. But I we never talked. I mean, we even had a break and everything else, and we just never even did it. And but it was I mean it was obviously it was a great final table. Well, let's let's fast forward. Uh, I mean, rewind a little bit back to the bracelet. First bracelet came in two thousand six. Uh, Omaha eight or better, three K buy in, three hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. What is that like, getting to win a bracelet? I mean, it's. I mean, they all just. They. It, it was just. It was probably more about the winning at that point, like mm-hmm. too. Well, I mean, obviously the money was great, but I didn't really have like many expenses or anything else, and like I mean, I was doing pretty well in life, like overall, anyway. So. Yeah. So, I mean, so you obviously, like 300k. No, I was just like, <clears throat> oh, I won something. Yeah, I was pretty like, good at this. I was like, yeah, oh, I'll just put that in the bank. Mm-hmm. And Omaha high lows. I mean, I got lucky because Party Poker ran Omaha high low in a pot limit before they even had a PLO. Yeah. And so I would just play that all the time, and I don't know. I just had a knack for it since like day one, like for 08. Like I just well, let's that. talk about your your Omaha prowess. I guess you can call it. 
You have seven Omaha titles on your resume, a bunch more final tables. I remember you and Matasau had some sort of bet going on for Omaha back in the day. Um, I'm not sure what we did. Something like a, maybe it was just who would do the best in Omaha events or something like that at the series. Um, or maybe I'm misremembering it. But you were clearly into this before Omaha became a thing amongst the No Limit players. You were one of the few hybrids at that time early on. Mm -hmm. Why did you even, what, what, what drew you to Omaha? Well, I mean, and it was mostly Omaha High Low. That's mm -hmm. the one that I played the most. But I mean, it was an easy transition to be playing high, I mean, to be playing high only like after playing high low. So yeah. Just, but it was really just because they had it on party poker. So I would play it and I was like, these guys are just, they don't even understand mm -hmm. this at all. Like, so I just was like, that's a very easy way to make money. You like, saw bigger edges there than yes, even in sure. Holden during the glory days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And obviously there's huge edges there, but like, I mean, I would just play so many tournaments too. So it's just like, oh, they got Omaha. It's like, and I just remember how bad they were. It's like, I mean, well, where do you rank yourself among Omaha specialists. Like high low? Yeah, any any format or number one. <laughs> number one, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh well, you know, there's 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 so called uh Omaha eight or better experts out there, you know, guys who specialize maybe in the tournament format or PLO experts, you know, Jason obviously is a good one, Lauren uh Klein, another one is doing really well. Um do you do you have any difference between cash and tournaments or is it just Yeah, I think that um, I think that they are way different, like for especially like, uh, especially in Omaha. So I think there's a lot of really good Omaha cash players mm -hmm. that don't do very well with the strategy for tournaments. So I don't really want to tell everybody the secrets of it. No, you just, don't have to give out your but secrets. But I do, like I do, I've seen some players and I'm just like, that's probably fine for cash, but like, yeah, when you can so reload, good. that's a good play. But mm -hmm. <laughs> not when your life is on the line. Mm -hmm. uh, I always ask people this. You, let's go one year ahead. 2007, you win your second bracelet. That's in PLO 1500, 194,000. So now you got two bracelets. Uh, I always ask people, where do they keep their bracelets? Um, mine were in a safe. My brother has them now. They were in Washington. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, so I did you give them to him as like a gift, or he's just holding? No, on to he her? just he. Uh, so when uh, my ex got remarried and moved, they were actually in a safe at her parents' house mm. um, through some moves and stuff like that. So so it's I not mean, something just, you yeah, display. I don't. Or... Yeah, I don't really display any of this stuff at all. So it's just kind of they're just put away. I think that a bunch of my other trophies are probably just in a box somewhere. <laughs> I think he has them. I'm not sure. So so the. The glory, the prestige of winning a tournament, that's not really what, what it does it for you. It's more just. Well, know, I, I, the bracelet the is just a bracelet. You don't even really need the bracelet because it's still, it's still there. Like, you still won it. So it's just like, it doesn't like. Yeah. I, it's. <clears throat> it just doesn't seem important to like display it. It's just like, yeah, people will either know or they won't, you know? So, like, if people are into poker, they know that you've won bracelets or they, you know, they won't care about like seeing it. It's not like you want to just show it off. That's right. I mean, it, it would be a little off-putting if you saw somebody walking around with it, mm -hmm. maybe outside of the day they won it. And I actually did do that for a little bit, but I was like, <laughs> this was in the time where, like, like you want to, then the whole goal was to get sponsored oh, back in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. like, at that those points, like, Ga I remember Gavin, rest in peace, but, like, giving me shit because, like, I had my bracelets, like, like, either, like, displayed and stuff like that. But it was mostly because I was like, I want, like full tilt or poker stars or whatever to notice me. So, like, because <laughs> as like, yeah, that's free money <laughs> like so obviously like I, that's the only reason i do it because it's not me at all like i don't like to show off you like, did anything. end up getting red pro status right uh, i did and i one yeah so i did i did get that um what I, was that struggle like uh did you find a struggle to get to find sponsorship as a i mean you're a good looking in shape american guy i mean who was dominating I, it, at the time it it was still pretty tough like because um i think that i actually got it just i was playing on full tilt and i just talked to uh one of the people there and I said like hey like look this is like I'd like to be I'm better than a lot of these other red pros and I'm like do it and they actually signed me right before um the big win in Niagara Falls like okay, the big yeah. WPT so like they got their money like right away like back because like mm -hmm. they signed me like I think it was like a week before so I was just all full tilt everywhere and like and then obviously won for them so I'm sure that they were pretty happy about that yeah uh let's talk a little bit about your um time at the world series since uh, the bracelets, you've done very well. You're you're kind of a machine at the World Series. Tons of final tables. 
But if we're looking at the specific numbers, I know you're familiar with this. Six second place finishes yeah. <laughs> since that last bracelet. I know. Also a third, two fourths, a fifth, something like 19 final tables, something crazy like that. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of this. <laughs> I wasn't sure how many final tables I had. I knew it was quite a few. But yeah, it's been quite disappointing to not get another bracelet, especially with like the not six seconds. Not because you want the bracelet. Yeah, not because I want the bracelet, but like the win. Like you obviously want to exactly. win. Obviously, yeah, there's yeah. way more money and everything else. Like, yeah, that's a lot of money you're leaving on top I've, too. I've ran quite, quite salty, like heads up uh, at the World Series. So Was there one particularly heartbreaking one that you can remember? I mean, I'm, I don't know in these spots if you're getting the heads up with like a chip and it's like satisfying that you laddered up to second. The worst one know. was the third. And it was the PL08 5K. That so this wasn't third. even a second place. That, what, that, like, because there's been second places where it's just like I mean, I've had huge deficits, and yeah, and there's been ones like where I was like, we played for 95 percent of the flips, or for 95 percent of the chips in one of them, where it was it was exactly 50 50. That was against Tyler Patterson, where uh, uh, anybody could have won. Yeah, yeah. So like we just ended up getting it all in. Where like he had nut low yeah. and nut flush draw, and I had like two pair and like a worse low draw and a, and a lower flush draw. And like, it was, I remember it was just exactly 50, 50. So like, but he, and then he ends up hitting a like, but I mean, we can chop too. Like, so we're going to chop a huge part of the time. And, uh, but then he ended up scooping it and yeah. And then he won. I mean, it was basically whoever won that hand was, you know, was somebody the, won that hand. That was like, the was third a, place one. No, that was the second place. The third yeah. place one was pretty brutal. Cause I had, I had been dominating the final table. So I had like, I believe the numbers were, I had 1.8, Roland DeWolf had 600, and then Brett Ritchie had 400,000. Yeah, you're supposed to win that one. <laughs> and, and I was out in three hands. What? So I raised the button with ace, ace, four, five, with four, five of spades. And he had ace, deuce, deuce, three, with ace, deuce of spades. And we get it all in preflop. Flop comes queen, jack, nine, with one spade. It comes spade, spade, uh. and he wins that hand. Oh. Uh. And then I uh, limp the small blind. So now we're dead even in chips. Yeah. Or he has me basically covered by a tiny little bit. Mm -hmm. I limp the small blind. Um, so this is, I can't remember. I think it was like three hands. And I had, I had ace, ace, four, jack or something. Diamonds. And, and I limp. He pots it. I repot. He calls. So we got, we each get like 216,000 in pre or something like that, I believe. And, uh. The flop comes, uh, I believe it was deuce seven nine. Do you, I don't know if you have it, but I'm just trying to look up the what you scored for here. And and uh, and he had ace three eight nine and with uh, with uh, like a club draw and I had eight, you know ace ace four with a uh, diamond draw and we get it all in obviously on the flop and uh, he ends up hitting <laughs> hitting it and so like it was just basically like go from like basically if I just hold on the ace ace four five to having a, a monster chip lead heads up. To out in third, to out in third. So, so that, that was, you know, you, you score hundred k or whatever for the for third place. How do you, how, how do you walk that one off? Like how how do you do that today? I mean, it's still like frustrating, like mm -hmm. for sure, and like and especially because PL08 has got to be my best game. Like mm -hmm. I mean, I'm good at limit 08 too, but PL08 is the one that I played like since 2004 online, like just every single time they have it. Yeah, and. Uh, so that one, I, I definitely want to get a title in that game. And I lost heads up in that game too, so like yeah. against <laughs> Tyler. So like, yes, I do want to get a title in that game as well. But yeah, that one was just, that one was always like just hurts because I'm just like, gosh, it's just like, just either one of those hands I could, I mean, obviously the first one, I'm a huge favorite. And then like the second one, like um, I think he was a favorite on the flop, but I still could, I could still could scoop him too. Exactly. So it's just like pretty insane to just like get scooped and both of those well hands. how do you how do you shake it off you just go hit the gym a little harder or <laughs> i mean it's toss just, and turn just, all night i mean it's just poker it just is what it is like so i mean obviously like i don't remember what the difference was money wise it was a lot but like mm -hmm. i don't remember exactly what it was but so it hurts well, but i won't remind you <laughs> uh let's um let's go on to uh, you know, it's not like I, I want to tell the audience too. It's not like you're just not winning anymore. You're mm -hmm. winning e elsewhere a ton. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of closing at the series. Right. Uh, yeah. Do you uh, do you feel like it's a you know um, bad luck thing? Do you feel? Do you yeah, I mean, there's a huge, huge amount of variance. Like, but you sure. don't believe like you you know you're an unlucky person or that you've. It's just a no. Matter it's of, just like yeah, like I'm I'm gonna get there again and like and. 
hopefully like win. Like I'm pretty aggressive at final table. I mean, I was chip lead in the PLO. Like I had half the chips four handed and got fourth. So, <laughs> uh, also still, um, good results online. I have a scoop title. You won the Sunday million, got almost 4 million in earnings there. Uh, when, when do you get to play online these days? Not much, I just, right? I just play, I actually, I've been playing on WSOP.com. Mm -hmm. I didn't play online for like, basically since my scoop title, like at the end of that year, I was just like, I was kind of burnt out about the online, you know, it sucked to like leave my kids and then like drive up to Canada and then like play out like, you know, 24 hours of poker. Like, yeah, so over how did that work? Did you just like get an apartment across the border mm -hmm. for just to play? Yeah. Okay. So I had an apartment with my buddy Jeffrey and we would just go up on the weekends and just play out like all day. And, but it was draining and it's, it's like, especially when you're playing so many games. So it sucks to like go up there and just like be like, ah, oh, I just lost 10K on this Sunday and I just wasted my whole weekend and you didn't get to watch football and like everything else. So it's just yeah, like, take I mean, it's on in the back. Money. That's, yeah, it's no ugh. fun. Yeah. Ugh. And like, it, and it's mentally draining to, especially with that much. I've been playing online at WSOP and it's like, it's way smaller. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and like, you know, I'm not playing like, you know, I play two to four games at a time and I'm just like sitting here relaxing on my couch. Like, so I actually like loved it. So like, I've only started doing that really this year. Like I played like some of the WSOP events and everything, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely, ones, yeah. yeah, it's definitely like, but now I just like, I'll just, I'll cry. You, you might see on me and they'll be like, oh, Scott's broke. Cause I'm just, he's playing this. Well, my, my coworker told me to give you some shit because, uh, he knocked you out of a tournament a few weeks ago. So. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> I don't, uh, but, uh, you know, he's definitely a big fish and you should feel bad about himself. <laughs> um, uh, can you explain this tweet from a couple of years ago where Alan Barry, um, tried to get you to eat a hundred McDonald's chicken nuggets in two hours? Did that ever happen? No, no one would take my action. So what do you think this is? I want to get this going again. Well, I, they <laughs> were talking about eating 100 nuggets and, and I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Like, I was like, okay, but you, I, I don't want to do it because like, it's obviously like... That's a lot of cheat days. <laughs> that's, that's a lot it's of cheat not days really that many cheat days. It's like 5,000 calories. Really, I think it would be so easy to do. I, I think I would just enjoy it. But I would like, obviously my stomach would be like... That's not what you eat. This is not gonna. This yeah. is gonna not end this well. Is, but this it's like, is questionably not even food. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they were supposed to ask Bill Perkins to give me a free roll, and I was just gonna say like, we could just do it. I'll do it at a tournament. Like it's like <laughs> you get it's two hours. Like you can just come back from break. They put a hundred nuggets there. It'd be like ten grand if you do that. Finish these in two hours, and be like, sure, I'll just eat them at the table. I, I gotta see this it. happen at the series, guys. Let's uh, let's make it happen. Uh, we close the podcast with some rapid fire questions. If you're ready to go, yeah. Biggest pot you've ever won or lost? Your choice. Could be equity in a tournament. Could be cash. Your choice. Oh, I would say this was um, the W Coop. This was the. I mean, I don't know if this is the biggest equity or not, but I would say this is pretty. Uh, I played a chip lead pot in uh, what is W Coop Championship. So it was like 1.6 million or something to first. Yeah. With like 11, 11 players left. I had King Queen versus King Nine on a King Jack X board. And we got him to, the guy was like playing insane. And like, I got him to put it all in. I was like, there was no way I was ever folding and got it in. And like he rivers a nine. And, and obviously like, he wins that pot for chip lead, and he ends up going on and winning the tournament. I don't think he ended up getting his money because I think it was a... Uh, was this it, Telcher? Yeah. This was uh, Mark Telcher, the... Uh, what was his name back then? Someone in the L? The Void. Oh, The Void, okay. Or The, the Void is the one that won the tournament, so I'm not sure if, uh, who, what the scenario was. That's right, right. He's, uh, he's come up on this podcast for different reasons before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, biggest pot you've ever witnessed? Just seen. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, Jason's a good friend of mine, so I watched, I mean, I saw, I wasn't there, but I watched him on TV, like, where he played two, like, what was it, two million euro pots, like, yeah, that's and, true. like, I remember watching, like, the one where, like, he ended up river in the straight, and, like, the guy was thinking about calling him with, like, <laughs> King High and stuff. <laughs> it's hard to beat those. Yeah. Best swap or piece you've ever had of anybody? Anybody come through for you? Yeah. Uh, Martin Jacobson. Oh, was this the event? To the have event, yeah. It was a. Uh, it was actually <laughs> I was backing somebody at the time, and they had swapped three percent in the back, and the swaps go on the backing. So oh. I was at that final table. That's, I don't ever go to final tables like. So I you mean, and Martin are not like. You know, it just wasn't between the two of you. No, it was just between me and someone I backed. So. Wow. 
and that was from ninth to ninth place to first place. So that was I didn't quite... realize a horse could do that, like trade out. But I guess it's his money, right? So yeah, we I, I've done that with horses before, where like if they want to swap, then it's just on it, and that's like because I, I I used to put some guys in some like you know a bunch like bigger than i would even play like for sure like because he's much better than i am so like Mm -hmm. i so i would put him in all sorts of stuff but it would be like it would definitely would help with the variance especially in those like high rollers and stuff where it's just like yeah you know just swap people are trading a ton anyway yes of course so like okay cool uh weirdest place you've ever played poker for money no sketchy home games you could think of i mean no i don't play too many home games i've gone to a couple Chinese poker for money Huh? What about weirdest place you played Chinese poker for I've, money? <laughs> I've only done that on the app. So I don't know. The weirdest I, – I don't think I've really played in any weird places. I've played at some country clubs and stuff like that. Um, but probably the weirdest place would be like the fact that going to Oklahoma where it's just like you just <laughs> are in the middle of nowhere and there's just this it's, huge casino. And like weird? you don't see an Oklahoma – plate anywhere it's just all yeah it's all texas it's just like they're just taking all that money it's just like texas like, out what are you in the doing? middle of nowhere emerges this giant shiny building with everyone's mm-hmm. just dumping money uh who's the best player we've never heard of or doesn't get enough love gosh i wouldn't be one that would know that any of your buddies you think uh, are better than their publicity would suggest I'm or just to... shout out a friend who you think. Uh, I know. I'm. Out. I'm trying to think of like who. Like, I'm not very good at these rapid fire questions, am I? It's all good. You don't have to answer rapid <laughs> I, fire. I'll try if I think of someone who's like really good. That, and I'll let you know. Well, you, we'll edit it in post. <laughs> <laughs> who's the best human being you've never you've met in the poker world? So take skill out of it. Just a good guy. Well, I would just say, like, I would say the friends just because I've, I know them so much better. I know there's a lot of great people. Oh, of like, course, yeah, yeah. But, I, I mean, I, I would say my buddy Lane and my buddy mm-hmm. um, Big Rick Ellerman, too. Like, so, like, Lane Flack and them. Cause just because we're such close friends now, and I see him, like, in all sorts of different scenarios. Mm-hmm. But, like, if I was going to say someone else, like, uh, Galfond, obviously. Galfond is just, like, yeah. if I was going to say someone else, it's just, just such a good person and just such a good aura or whatever you want to call it, like, around him. Uh, we talked about this earlier. Worst job you had before poker? I, <clears throat> I mean, the ref- I, you said what a refi- refinery? That that wasn't the worst. The worst that's, that I, that's pretty bad. <laughs> the worst that I had was I I had two jobs during this one summer, and one of them was uh, I had to load uh, like it, it was like R- I think it was RPS trucks, okay. but it was like from three to seven. Okay. And then I had another job from like eight to five so like that was like it was just ridiculous to, to like have to get up that early you're just exhausted and so that was that where was we get that work ethic from was that a parental thing or oh, probably my mom like i mean my mom's always had really good work ethic but i mean i've i've always like i mean <clears throat> i always thought about like college and like people just get these loans like even like i was just like it's like i don't want to start a hundred thousand in debt like i don't want to be in debt at all so like that's why i work so hard like so it was like i'm gonna work because i'm gonna pay him now i don't want to pay i don't want to owe a hundred thousand yeah exactly and i wouldn't be a fan of them like just like saying oh we're just gonna wipe out all this debt it's like well i gave up a lot to to make sure that this was already paid for so like i don't think that that would be fair to someone else who's like going out and having fun yeah that is that is kind of a funny thing it's like as much as uh i i uh I'm not a fan of the you know predatory lending and stuff that you know, some people just shouldn't go to college you know, mm-hmm. um, and they shouldn't pay six figures for some of these degrees that you know give them 30k a year jobs. Uh, mm-hmm. At the same time, you know I went through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean. I managed to get through without loans. So mm-hmm. yeah. Um, all right. Uh, if not for poker, what would you be doing? I'd be probably doing something in real estate, mm-hmm. and I've been talking about it for. 15 years about getting back into it and just but I just never really have so but I would I mean that's I've always had an interest in it and you know buying and selling and whatnot and try to find value and everything else I flipping just, are you a handy yeah, guy? flipping well I'm not a handy guy but I mean you know who to call <laughs> but I know I, I can know I can see value so like the one foreclosure I bought like I knew like I, I knew how much it was going into foreclosure for and I could see all the equity yeah and like so I and I knew like because it was an acre in land. I was like I went and did the research. I'm like I can subdivide this lot. Like so I I can make a lot of money on this if this guy will sell it to me. And I mean he did. I mean the guy was, just, I mean the guy was, 
really big into drugs. So it was basically a drug house that I bought. <laughs> but, but it was still in good shape and yeah. everything else. I, I mean, I knew his son. I played soccer with his son growing up. And, but ended up getting that. That was, I mean, that helped with like everything, like just life-wise, because it was just a lot of money too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, what was your largest non-poker wager? I don't know if you ever... I don't you like degen the, out or anything. I don't degen out. So like probably not. I mean probably. I think that we maybe probably just a couple thousand. Yeah, like sports or prop betting. I probably put. I've probably put a little bit on sports sometimes, but usually like not that much. But I'll do like the March Madness. Like mm -hmm. so, like I've done three of those before where it's a thousand a pop. So it's like three thousand dollars, I guess. Like yeah. And then like, <clears throat> and I think I can't remember. I think I only. I don't remember how much we put. We bought. It was a big group of us that bought. The lotto tickets when it was like ah, huge yes. the one time, but I don't think it, it was. I think it was. I think it was only like fifteen hundred that we each paid. Like, but it was a bunch of us. But we had a ton of you tickets. People come back with handful stacks. Um, of oh, it was somewhere. way more than that. I was, it was boxes <laughs> and boxes. There was a big group of us, so it was like we each would have had like X percentage of whatever. So did you guys get anything back? Oh, we got something back. I can't remember exactly what it was. Kid asked if you do this with Josh. Like he was he was the one running the show. So yeah. Uh, what is a talent you don't have that you wish you did have? I was just I, I was, wish I was more athletic. I mean, I'm pretty athletic, but I just I always wish I was that's more greedy to me. I yeah, mean. <laughs> <laughs> so I always wish I was more like or better hand eye coordination or I mean better. I mean, any more, and you might be playing a, a sport for a living. Yeah, <laughs> I wish that I had better eyes. I'll say that because like okay. my, I have my eyes. I don't have a dominant eye, so it makes it harder for me to. That was hard for like harder for like hitting a baseball, and if I golf because my eyes constantly have to like like adjust so like if i hit a golf ball i can never follow it so like when i golf i'm like you have to watch the golf ball because I, I i won't be able you to tend see to it pull the ball because of that i wonder if it I'm doesn't it's not i mean i tend to pull and, and push like okay. golf because i suck but <laughs> but even if i hit it directly down the middle like i just will not be able to see it because my eyes have to constantly be doing this with the ball like as it's going further so yeah it's how you tweeting about lasik a, a while back yeah i do want to get i do want to get lasik but i and then I talked to an eye doctor, and he's like, don't do it. I'm just like, what? 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 <laughs> I'm like, huh? I don't want to huh? hear that. Don't even tell me that. He's like, I got some horror stories. I'm like, don't tell me. No, I'm still going to get it. No, don't tell me that. That's, I don't want, no one wants to hear that. Sorry to anybody out there who's considering <laughs> it right now. I'm sure it's 100% safe. Yeah. <laughs> well, what is 100%? Yeah. Uh, headphones on at the table, yes or no? Uh, usually not, but every once in a while, like especially like if it's a long boring tournament, mm -hmm. I will have headphones on, usually watching a show or a movie or mm -hmm. just there was a, a week that I, I mean, I bought a run at once thing and I, I did it for like a week or so, but I'm not, I'm not very good at doing that. Like I should get yeah. back on there. Every time I see that hundred dollars a month that I pay, I'm like, I should be on there sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you should probably get some value out of that. Yeah. Uh, when you are listening, what kind of music are you listening to? Mm. I'm usually listening to me. I don't listen to music at the table, but I listen to it at the gym and it's usually just. A Rocky mix? Or? No, it's <laughs> Rocky. No, Rocky would be good. Though. It's it's a huge different mix. Like I mean, I like like Jay Z and Kanye. Just like a good beat to like like keep yeah. the energy up. Like no matter what. So like nothing depressing and sad. Yeah, so. nothing slow. Uh, favorite album? Yeah, I just, I wouldn't even I'd probably one of Jay Z's. Okay, favorite movie? Maybe that's easier. Uh, uh let's go with Tombstone. That's crazy. That's what Lane said. Well, I know Lane said that too. I know a lot of like there's. Just, I have other friends too that that's like their favorite movie too. I mean, I I can watch it every single time it's on. Yeah, I, it's got a following. All right, we end the podcast the same way every time with a question from the random question generator. I don't have internet in here, so I preloaded sixty. Pick a number one through sixty. One. Okay. Have you ever gotten stitches? Yeah, I've gotten stitches like 10 times in my life. Really? Yeah. Okay, list can, all 10. No. <laughs> I don't think I can remember all 10. What was the, what was the stupidest injury or, or craziest uh, stunt? I got some crazy pull? ones. Uh, one of them, I was playing soccer, okay. and I went to get a header into the goal. Mm -hmm. I scored, by the way, but then my head went into the goal post. Man. So this is like right up here. So like if I, one time I shaved my head, you could definitely like see it. But I mean, it was an amazing amount of blood. I would imagine so if it you was, head butted a crossbar, yeah. you'd be having an amazing. It was the sidebar. I'm not that. I'm not. I don't have that. I don't have that kind of hops. In my brain, maybe that's what I want. I want to be able to jump head, higher. You jumped so high. 
<laughs> that's actually I changed it. I want to be able to jump higher because yeah. like I could never got even close to dunking or anything. But the talent I wish to have is to hit my head on the crossbar <laughs> yeah. instead of on the side. Yes. Uh, any other crazy injuries? Or? Um, I had uh, when I was a kid. Um, I was my friends, my buddy, and I were just golfing in the backyard mm -hmm. and, so, and i was standing behind him and he like let go and he uh you probably can see it here like this golf golf <sighs> golf club right here you're pointing at your temple that's not a good place yeah, to yeah. get hit by a golf club <laughs> yeah no it was uh, so, no <laughs> i had uh and then uh, let's see in the back of the head i don't know if you can see this. these are all head injuries yeah you have a little bit of a a spot where the hair doesn't grow so i was like yeah i was like <laughs> i think i was like 11 or 12 and i uh went on my own like at Whistler um, when I was with my family to ski and I got lost and went tried to go down a double diamond on accident and just like <laughs> I lost control and somebody's ski hit me in the back of the head and <laughs> it was my own but <laughs> but and then so that was that was those are the, probably the best three yeah you know? I have nothing like that I have a, I have a football Is one like where work? like I was like we were just playing tackle football just like friends like not no you know, tackle in the street with no pads, like mm -hmm. normal kids. And I put my tooth through my, uh, through oh. here, so it went all the way through. You bit through your lip. Like, I was, like, coming through, and, like, you know, like, whatever guys hit me, and my, my taste just, like, went all the way through. So, like, it was just, like, could see. I bet, Gnarly. But it didn't leave anything. Yeah. Well, I can't I see can still, I can or... still feel it. Like, there's still, like, something on the inside, because that's, like, where it got. But I'm, I'm surprised that it didn't show anything here. Well, I'm glad you graduated to poker. There's uh, a lot less injuries. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more sedentary lifestyle, but you're taking care of that. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. That's it. That's the show. Thank you once again to Scott Clements for the stories. You can follow him on Twitter at Big Risky. That's a Risky with two Ks. I'd also like to give a special thanks to Lane Flack for setting up this interview, uh, even though you gave Scott no warning whatsoever about what he'd be getting into. I think it turned out well. If you like the show, please go ahead and subscribe. Leave a nice five-star rating. It only takes a few seconds. Do us a favor and write a review and let us know about it with an email to PokerStories at CardPlayer.com and we'll give you a free digital subscription to CardPlayer Magazine. Thanks for listening. <laughs>